Well, Cathy, in one sense, it isn't a surprise because we knew that the disagreements between John Bolton and President Trump were becoming more frequent and more intense. They were worlds apart on North Korea, on Iran and on Afghanistan, as you mentioned. They can't even agree on how all of this happened. President Trump says that he fired John Bolton. John Bolton says that he resigned. And it harks back to an earlier time when this was very frequent, the sudden removal of someone very high up in the Trump administration. Just today, uh, everything changed very quickly. We were alerted this morning there'd be a joint press conference with Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and John Bolton this afternoon. Then the firing tweets happened and Mike Pompeo fronted the cameras alone. He said of this, I am never surprised and perhaps you shouldn't focus on the palace intrigue. But it is more than palace intrigue when it is the top of the tree for the White House, the chaos and confusion of its foreign policy strategy at such a critical time. Historically high tensions with Iran, nothing to show for negotiations with North Korea, secret peace talks with the Taliban called off before they began, and failing efforts to achieve regime change in Venezuela. As National Security Advisor, John Bolton's job was not to add to President Donald Trump's long list of foreign policy challenges, but to help him solve them. Thank you very much. Now he's out, sacked by tweet. I informed John Bolton last night that his services are no longer needed at the White House. I disagreed strongly with many of his suggestions, as did others in the administration, and therefore I asked John for his resignation, which was given to me this morning. I thank John very much for his service. I will be naming a new national security adviser next week. But that's not quite how John Bolton saw it go down. I offered to resign last night, and President Trump said... Let's talk about it tomorrow. But then the pair often disagreed, which brings us to this. On the hour's dramatic breaking news, the National Security Advisor John Bolton is the leaving. Third the White National Security Advisor of this administration to go. The president said, you know, he was going to be different. He's a businessman. And so we, none of us should be surprised that he fires people sometimes. Sometimes is one thing, but the turnover of this president's inner circle is dizzy. Wow. Oh. Wow! <laughs> this is the year of wow. I don't know what happened there, but the bottom line is uh, I appreciate what John has done for the country for a long period of time, and that the president uh, will now get a chance to pick a national security advisor he has more confidence in. Hmm? Fresh from his job as a commentator at Fox News, John Bolton joined the White House last April. Under George W. Bush, he served as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, despite his contempt for the organization, once noting if the 38th floor U.N. building in New York lost 10 stories, it wouldn't make a bit of difference. In Donald Trump's America First administration, he would serve as a hawk, unafraid to take a hard line against past enemies, even as the deal-making president reached out to them. John's very good. John is a... Uh, he has strong views on things, but that's OK. I actually tempered John, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Nobody thought that was going to happen. I, I'm the one that tempers him, but that's OK. I have different sides. I mean, I have John Bolton, and I have other people that are a little more dovish than him. You can see him on the sidelines as President Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal last year. But one year, and many disagreements later, he wasn't as visible. Certainly not at the DMZ when the president met with Kim Jong-un in June. John Bolton was in Mongolia. The writing had been on the wall. Not only was there tension over North Korea, Bolton had favoured the strike on Iran that the president called off at the last minute. The president had reportedly cut him out of plans for a peace agreement with the Taliban at Camp David, a negotiation which this weekend was called off. On the same day he sacked John Bolton, President Trump's first national security adviser, Michael Flynn, was in court. He'll be sentenced later this year for lying to the FBI. Danny Eistel in Washington. Now, earlier I spoke to Ned Price. He's a fellow at the New America Foundation and a former CIA intelligence officer who worked at the National Security Council under President Obama. I began by asking him what might be behind John Bolton's departure.
President Trump had very little idea of what he was getting himself into uh, when he appointed John Bolton as his national security advisor. It was widely reported here in our country uh, that President Trump, uh, Trump, above all else, enjoyed listening to John Bolton on Fox News. Uh, and so it seems quite clear that he didn't have a deep or perhaps any appreciation uh, for his strongly held convictions and policy views. He was a, an architect and cheerleader of the Iraq War, a war that President Trump himself uh, disavowed years later. He scuttled the Clinton administration's attempts uh, to broker dialogue and diplomacy with North Korea. Uh, he was a hawk when it came to Iran. Uh, he even singled out Cuba, a country in our own hemisphere, accusing Cuba falsely of having a WMD program, a program of weapons of mass destruction. Uh, so there should have been very little surprise that Donald Trump, uh, an individual who at the very least campaigned on promises of keeping America out of reckless foreign entanglements didn't exactly align uh, with the views of his handpicked national security advisor. So what went wrong with those Afghan talks which involved the Taliban apparently due to come to Camp David? Was uh, Bolton uh, for or against? Well, it seems there were both tactical differences and strategic differences. If the accounts that we're reading now are correct, uh, John Bolton seems to have been adamantly against uh, the idea to invite the Taliban to Camp David, and I think rightly so. Uh, there is actually an, a, a report out now uh, that President Trump and John Bolton engaged in a very heated discussion uh, last night uh, about the uh, plan that was aborted uh, over the weekend. But more strategically, on a broader level, John Bolton also seems to have been opposed uh, to the diplomatic process uh, in toto. Donald Trump, he doesn't have domestic policy victories. And so he sees foreign policy as an arena in which he can get some wins under his belt. And all of those potential wins uh, would violate these deeply held core convictions that John Bolton brought to this office. So replacing John Bolton will be an absolutely key decision. Well, it'll be a key decision, but it'll be a very tough decision, not because this president will wrestle uh, with who is the best fit, with who has uh, the, the best and most competent ideas. It will be increasingly difficult to find someone who would be willing to take on this job. Let's just review the record. There have been three national security advisors in this three-year-old administration. The first is in federal court today, waiting to be sentenced to prison. The second uh, was very ingloriously pushed out uh, of the job. And now John Bolton, depending on whom you believe, was either fired or uh, or resigned.